I'm Luca De Loca, Principal Cloud Architect at Veeam, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about cloud gateways and certificate configuration. In Cloud Connect, we use certificate for guaranteeing the encryption, the confidentiality, and ultimately the security of the data that transit between a tenant and the service provider. We use certificates in two main areas, in Cloud Connect. The first one is IES 256 and is used for encrypting data at rest. So the data that is stored in a backup repository at the service provider side inside Cloud Connect. And then we use SSL for encrypting data in flight, which means we encrypt using SSL or specifically TLS we encrypt the tunnel that is stretched between the customer and the service provider. This allows to have communication happening over public internet without the need for dedicated link or VPN configuration. Everything happens over public internet, but in a secure way. If you wanna learn more about the encryption at rest, you can go and read the chapter listed below in the ClockNet reference architecture. Today, we are going to talk about how certificate work in ClockNet for the encryption in flight. We can watch a schema here where we have a tenant backup server connected to the service provider backup server running ClockNet. And in between, there is the cloud gateway component, which is the one responsible for creating the configuration of the tunnel. We have here some TLS certificate, and we will see later in the demo how they are configured and installed. But right now, it's important to understand the flow. So what happens when there is the handshake between the tenant and the service provider? You see five different steps in the process, and we're gonna talk about all of them one by one. So in step one, the tenant backup server sent a request to the cloud gateway because there is a backup job, there is a replication job, and the Tana backup server want to create a ciphered tunneled connection. So the cloud gateway takes the request coming from the tenant and passes it to the service provider backup server. There is, first of all, an authentication process where username and password are checked. And once this is verified, the service provider backup server in step three exposes a TLS certificate, which is installed into its store, and it passes it to the backup server through the cloud gateway. Technically, what's passed is the public key of the certificate, because the private key is stored and never moved from the backup server. Step four, the tenant receives the public key of the certificate and it goes and check the validity of the certificate. If it's a public certificate, the public certification authority is contacted and the certificate is verified. If the verification is completed successfully, step five, the service provider backup server establish a secure communication channel, not just between the cloud gateway and the tenant, but also between the different component of the Cloud Connect. So the Cloud Gateway, the Cloud Repository, if it's a backup operation, or the Cloud Host, if it's a replication operation. So in this way, the entire uh, tunnel process is totally protected from the tenant to the gateway to the final destination, being the repository or a host. The tenant is gonna then use the public key of the TLS certificate to cipher the entire connection, and the cloud gateway using the private key of the backup server will be able to decrypt the data inside the tunnel and so be able to read the data. In order to do so, the first step is to configure the cloud gateway uh, role into Cloud Connect and install the certificate. So let's move to the demo. 
Okay, we are now into our lab environment. We have installed and configured Veeam Backup Server and installed a license for enabling Cloud Connect. The first operation we need to do in Cloud Connect is to manage the certificate. There is a dedicated command here, you can see in the Cloud Connect main screen. And so we hit this one. The software goes and search into the certificate store of the Windows machine if there are already some installed certificate or we can choose to generate a new one. We have two main options here, which is to generate a new self-signed certificate. This self-signed is not validated by any uh, public certification authority, so it cannot be totally verified by the tenant unless the service provider, and this is the option available in the software, also send a thumbprint of the same certificate. The other option would be to select a certificate from the certificate store because we already installed it previously, or we can import a certificate that we generated externally to the software. For this short demo, we're gonna generate our own new certificate. So we are going to generate a certificate. We give it a friendly name, so we will be able to identify this specific certificate into the certification store. We hit next, so the generation process starts and the certificate has been completed. We see here all the different information, so the common name, the organization, uh, the expiration date, and we also have here the thumbprint. We can also hit the button here, copy to clipboard, so that all this information are copied into our clipboard and we can pass the thumbprint to the tenant. We hit finished and the certificate is saved into the certification store and already configured to be used. Now that we have configured the certificate, we can go and add a cloud gateway. That would be a component exposed over public internet that will be able to use the SSR certificate and encapsulate the network traffic between the customer and the service provider. In fact, if you go here into cloud gateways, we see that by default, there is none. On a more complex and production ready environment, we will suggest to have a dedicated machine or many dedicated machines acting as cloud gateways. For this short demo, we're going to install the cloud gateway into the same machine of the Veeam Backup Server. The process is the same. Just remember on a production environment, we will probably do this in a dedicated machine. So we go here with the button and say, add the gateway. We choose a server. So as we say here in this small lab, we only have the backup server. You will have a dedicated cloud gateway machine, which is a Windows machine ready to become a cloud gateway. We can choose which TCP and UDP port is gonna be used. By default, Cloud Connect uses TCP port 6180. It can be changed if needed. Then we choose which configuration in the networking we're gonna use. If the server is connected directly to public internet and so it has a public IP address, like this machine here, you see it's a public IP. This is not a public IP. It could be exposed directly over internet. If it's behind the firewall using some sort of network address translation or some other firewall solution, we would configure this option. So this the, so the gateway is located behind NIT. And in this case, we will say, okay, the DNS name that can reach the public IP of the firewall is gonna be like cloudconnect.provider.com or something like that. Remember, this DNS name is gonna be also the name that is validated into the TLS certificate. The two has to be the same in order to the certificate to work. Unless we decide that we're gonna use a self-signed certificate and so we don't really care about the correspondence between the two values. We move on. The software check if there is any component already installed into the machine and there is not. So it says that it's gonna be installed. We say apply 
end, we wait for the installation process to complete. Okay, the installation is completed. You see, it took not even many, a minute. It says the gateway has been created successfully. So we move into next and we hit finish. And now we have our cloud gateway available here and we can start to create tenants and offer them access to our Cloud Connect. Okay, the demonstration is over. If you wanna have additional information, here are some uh, link to helpful pages we have. So the specific TLS section in our Cloud Connect user guide, how you can manually create certificate explained into the Cloud Connect reference architecture, or if you wanna automate the entire process, there is a guide that explains how to use Let's Encrypt and PowerShell in, again, into the ClockNet reference architecture. Thanks for watching.